This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by unbeaten light heavyweight Nick Fantauzi. Nick, how are you? Uh, not bad. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. Um, you're 10-0, and 0, looking yes, to make sir. it 11 uh, on Sunday in yep. Toronto, where, where you've, you're from and you've had most of your fights. We've not had you on the channel before, so let, let's start from the very start. How did you first get into the sport? Uh, I got into the sport, well... My first start, I was about 15. I had a punchy bag in, in my basement. Um, I never even used it before. Uh, I watched the Rocky movie. I went downstairs, started hitting the bag, and, and then I just fell in love with it. And then I started watching real boxing. And, and then uh, eventually I searched for a gym, and I started at a gym. How did you get to 15 without ever seeing the Rocky film? Well, I, I saw it before then, but just I had the bag just by coincidence. My little brother got it for Christmas, never used it. And then uh, after one day watching The Rocky, probably for my fourth or fifth time watching it, then I, I go, you know what? Let me go hit the bag. And then I just, right away, I just felt like a connection. It sounds a little weird, but right, right away, right when I hit it, I felt I felt good. Um, you know, my friends would come over and see me hit it, and they're like, holy, you could hit. And then I learned how to, how to properly hit. <laughs> how quickly did you develop once you joined the gym? Um, so I got a late start. Uh, where I grew up, it was a very rural community. It was like very... There's nothing really around um, 15 years old, 16 years old. You know, my, you know, my parents school, school, school. So I wasn't able to, uh, to go out. I wasn't allowed to even go to, to a boxing game and train. It, it wasn't even really physically possible at the time. I would have got kicked out of the house. So um, eventually there's a gym that opened up somewhere close to me. I was like 19, um, started going to the gym and that's how I really got it started. And what was your amateur career like? Uh, it was a, I had a very tough amateur career. Um, I only had, uh, I think about 20, 27, 28 fights. Hmm. And um, it was just tough. My weight class, I fought at 200 pounds. So 201 heavyweight in, uh, in the amateur system here in Canada. Well, everywhere. It was uh, 201. And, you know, it was really hard to get fights. Um, I would take fights on day's notice, two days notice, anything I can get. And people always, I had no shows. I'd go to the event. No, no one would uh, show up. My opponent wouldn't show up. I'd have cancellations all the time. It was really hard getting fights. And I had a 10-year amateur career, and uh, I only had that many fights. So I should have had, like, 200. But I got a lot of, lots of experience. I sparred a lot of pros, and, you know, I made the best of it. So what age were you when you turned professional, and what drove that decision? So I had a very late uh, start as a pro. I went pro at 31. Um, I should have went pro a lot sooner than a lot sooner than I did, but uh, you know, a lot of injuries happened, a lot of bad luck. I was overworking myself. I was working a day job, you know, waking up at five thirty, five o'clock in the morning, go to go to work, um, then training after work, going to another gym at night, um, training people whenever I could. Wasn't getting out of a lot of sleep. I got a lot of injuries and uh, a lot of bad luck throughout my amateur career. Um, not from fighting, just from training and from just life. Um, yeah. So long story short, after a couple of times that my pro career didn't end up uh, happening when it should have, finally I made a decision and I just approached Lee Baxter, who's now my promoter. And uh, I just said, hey, I've been working my whole life for this. Uh, put me on a card. I can fight. I can sell tickets. I'll do whatever. Just put me on a card. And uh, he looked at me and he goes, yeah, okay, I'll give you a shot. And uh, I guess he saw something that uh, he saw that driving me. And, and now here I am today, still signed with Lee Baxter and uh, doing all right. And as someone who started quite late in the sport, was there anyone or any number of people that you used as your inspiration? Were there any fighters out there that you looked up to? Um, just from, from the age standpoint, I know there's lots of guys like Sergio Martinez was one of the guys that I know he started very late in his career. I don't remember. I think it was 29 or something like that. Maybe 20. It was, it was something pretty late. But um, the way I looked at it is uh, just like always, I take positives and negatives out of every situation. And I said to myself, look, I went pro at, uh, you know, 31 at the same time throughout my career. I've never been beat up. I've never been knocked out. I, I didn't take a lot of punishment. So I'm a fresh 31 at the time. Even now I'm, I'm you know, 35 years old. I'm a fresh 35 year old. Um, you know, training is obviously rigorous. It's hard, you know, but when it comes to actual, you know, age, I feel like I'm 25. So what about style wise? Is there anyone out there you've taken kind of elements of their style and kind of patterned it to your own? I 
to be honest, I kind of take a lot of different fighters from the past and I kind of try to merge it in and create my style. Um, you know, I have a very awkward style where, you know, I'm tall, I'm long, but at the same time, I'm athletic. I'm a lot faster than I seem I would be, especially, you know, you might see videos and say, oh, this guy's, you know, whatever, it's a little bit slower. And then you get in there and it's not the same. Um, you know, I take all my favorite fighters and kind of, you know, for example, you know, I, I, got, I like guys like Lennox Lewis, you know, even the Klitschko brothers using their distance. I, I like that style. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, I have a little bit of who I'm not, I'm not like him, but Roy Jones is very explosive. He has some moves that he uses that I try to emulate a little bit and make my own. Um, you know, all throughout history, there's different fighters that I kind of take what they, what they have and kind of make it my own. And I think that's why it makes me pretty versatile. Tell us a little bit about your training setup. So who's your head coach? Where do you train? How often do you train? So right now I'm uh, training with Billy Martin. I just made the move uh, a couple months ago at Hard Knocks Boxing Gym in Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, I train, you know, six days a week. Sunday is usually the day that I kind of take it easy and have my day off. Um, that's my usual schedule. Um, sometimes it switches. I usually like to take one day a week where I don't train. But, uh, you know, that's, you know, pretty much what I do. I go to Team Euphoric for my strength and conditioning. Uh, Steven Daniele, he's the best strength and conditioning trainer I've ever seen in my life. I've ever, you know, he's very knowledgeable. He's amazing. Um, really made progress within the last, especially the last couple of years where, you know, because of uh, all these restrictions and, and COVID, um, I haven't been able to fight in two years. So I had to focus on other things and get better in every way I could. Just so when I get that call, I'll be ready and I'm ready. You said earlier about having to work at the same time as training. Are you able yep. to be a full-time professional now? Yeah, I am. But now what I do instead, I quit my job. I work for the city of Vaughan. Where I grew up in Vaughan. Um, I worked for that city of Vaughan. Um, I did construction jobs on the side. Um, anything I can do, I'm, I'm a hard worker. That's, that's how I was brought up. And um, just go, go, go. And now, you know, right before I went pro, I said to myself, look, I'm 31. If I want to make a, a deal of this, a run at this, I got to do things different. So I quit my job of 11 years and I started just for my, for income coming in, I started uh, training students and clients in boxing, boxing fitness. And that way, at least even though I'm working, I make my own hours and I'm around the sport. And, you know, as a coach, you, you kind of brush up on the basics that you sometimes tend to forget a little bit and it keeps you sharp. So, you know, since I did that, everything's gotten way better. No more injuries since I went pro and, you know, here and there, you know, I, I broke my hand in my eighth pro fight. Um, that's, you know, it happens, right? Um, I found a way to win and uh, that's it. You said when you first met with uh, Lee Baxter, you told him yep. you'd be happy to sell tickets. You, you'd be good at that. What, what gave you that confidence that you'd be able to become an attraction? Well, even as an amateur, I started off like my first amateur fight. Um, I had like 50 people come see me and it was all, it was like an hour away where I went to go fight. I had 50 people come see me and that was just the, the base of like my best, like circle, I guess. And like the kind of just around the outer circle. And, uh, as an amateur, I'd, I'd have a, a lot of people support me and I ended up, you know, I told you about the cancellations. I ended up sometimes, you know, I'd have people come in a snowstorm and then the fight gets canceled. The opponent doesn't show up. I kind of got sick of it, so I stopped. I stopped inviting people to come to my fights because I would even get excited before a fight because I didn't know if it was going to happen or not. It was, hmm. you know, I had a. I don't want to complain like I had it so hard, but I worked my butt off. I, I take fights with one arm, and I'd still win. Like I, I would do whatever I can just to fight. I ended up fighting a bunch of my fights in the super heavyweight division. So I fought guys that were two thirty, two forty. One guy I think was two fifty three, and I was one hundred eighty eight pounds. So I did whatever I can do just to get fights. So it was it the smartest? No, but I came out pretty good. So, um, you know, it, you know, it taught me a lot of actually examples of what to do when you're a pro because things happen in boxing all the time. So it, it kind of made it towards my advantage where I don't even get excited until I'm going to step into that ring, which is actually a good thing because you save energy, you keep composed, and then all the energy goes towards the fight. So what are your kind of big ambitions? What are the boxes you want to tick? So, you know, small time, like small, um, like at the minimum, you know, I want that Canadian title. I want national titles. Um, a world title would be great. And I, I really think it could happen. Um, my record's getting up there. Um, I keep getting better and better. 
And that's, that's what I want. I want to make a name for myself um, and put all this work, which I've worked all these years for. It needs to, uh, to pay off. And it has paid off. But like, if I retired today, I'd be happy with what I did because, you know, 10 years of amateur experience and, you know, a lot of people saying, you know, oh, you kept getting injured or this happened or this happened. Maybe it's not for you. And, you know, I just said, forget that. And I went towards my goals. And now here I am going on my 11th pro fight and I'm undefeated and I'm doing well. And, and uh, you know, whatever else happens from here, it's just a bonus, but I have high ambitions. So. And you're obviously a huge attraction locally in the, in the Ontario um, province, but when are we likely to see you step out of there either, you know, somewhere else in Canada or even internationally, the U S for example. Anytime. As soon as I get an opportunity, I'm there. Uh, that's what I want. That's the goal. Um, fighting at home is great. But one of the perks about boxing, which I've experienced as an amateur, but in a you know small capacity, but I have, I went to different countries like Bahamas as an amateur. You know, that whole aspect of boxing is great. You get to go to countries and, and experience those countries that you never probably would have if you didn't, if it wasn't for boxing. So um, I would love those opportunities, especially at this point in my career where I'm getting up there in fights and I'll have calls to go elsewhere. And I can't wait for those opportunities. And you um, have your own family now? Uh, no, I just, I'm engaged. I have my, my girlfriend, so I'm engaged, my fiance. Um, I have, uh, and I'm very close with my, my immediate family. And yeah, so no, no kids, but uh, one day. <laughs> well, what sort of stuff do you get up to when you're not um, working hard in the gym? Uh, to be honest, you know, most of it is just work and training. Like training, number one, works number two. And then the odd time that I do get some free time, which is not very often, you know, I like to do little things, um, you know, see my family, uh, see my nieces and nephew, um, nephews, sorry. And, uh, you know, spend time with family and friends. And uh, the biggest thing I like to do too is, you know, when, when I do have time, take a vacation. That's, I love doing that. But, uh, you know, that's pretty much all I do is, is work, train, sports, you know. And you kind of hinted at this earlier, but for people out there that haven't um, seen you fight yet, how would you describe your style in the ring? My style, I would say, is an aggressive, long-range boxer that can punch and he can fight when, when I want to. You know, I, I think I, could, I mix it up pretty well. I do I have very, like I said, it's kind of like an awkward style where I could do anything and I'm very, you know, on the fly sometimes. And, uh, you know, I just, I think I'm a pretty entertaining fighter. Um, you know, trying not to get his much as possible is the best way to be successful in boxing. So, you know, that's pretty much my style. Where, where would you like to be by the end of this year? By the end of this year, I would like to be, you know, 14 and 0, have at least four fights this year. Um, make up for the last two years of, uh, of, uh, nonsense. I like to call it, um, you know, We've, I've been working, I've been on my fight weight for like a year. I've, I'm ready to go. I've been ready to go for a long time and a bunch of uh, possible opportunities that didn't end up happening because of restrictions and this and that. So, you know, getting four fights in this year would be great. Great stuff. Well, really, really appreciate your time. Just one last thing before I let you go. Just yep. tell people out there how they can find you on the different social media platforms. They can find out a bit more about what you're doing. Okay. Well, I'm, um, I guess out of all, I'm mostly active on Instagram. So my Instagram is Nick underscore Fantauzi, F-A-N-T-A-U-Z-Z-I. -Z -Z um, I have uh, Facebook. My team page is Team Fantauzi. Um, my Twitter, I kind of slack on a little bit, but it's Nick Fantauzi. And uh, yeah, and I'm also on uh, Millions. They're my partner in, in merchandise. So if you go to millions.co, they're a great uh, up and coming company that uh, you can buy merch and support fighters like myself. Excellent. Really, really appreciate it. Very best of luck for Sunday, of course, as well. Thank you very much. And um, let's catch up again later in the year. I would love to. Thank you very much for your time. Anytime. Take care. Thanks, Nick.